<gasps> Hi friend. If you click to check out the new Viseart Petite Four palettes, then please keep on watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. A huge thank you to Viseart for sending me these. They reached out on Instagram, they slid into my DMs. And they were so nice to offer to send me the newer products. In addition to the Petite Four Quads, they sent me the Violette Attendu. Which, you know, we might have to dedicate a separate video for. I was thinking about doing it in the same... Rest Alicia, it's fine. Here they are, so beautifully packaged. And I love the concept behind uh, Petite Four. It actually translates into small oven in French. And it's used to describe, it says here, a small bite-sized confectionery or savory appetizer. And I think everything from the packaging and the color selection definitely represents that meaning to the fullest. To quickly go over some product details, each quad retails for $22. They are currently sold, I believe, Sephora, Beautylish, and Viseart Paris, as well as Muse Beauty Pro. And if you do have a pro discount with them, you can get 30% off these quads. We're looking at a total net weight of 0.6 grams or 0.21 ounces of product. Products, a suggested shelf life of 36 months and made in the USA. This is a new format for Viseart. They do have their Viseart Edit palettes as well as their Petite Pro palette. The Petite Pro palette has six magnetic pans and has a similar flap magnetic constructions as the Petite Four. And you have the Viseart Edit palettes that house 12 shadows, same magnetic palette construction except those pans are a little smaller. So you see here it's the same size except of course this one has 12 and this has four, excuse me, I said Petite Pro in the beginning, is actually their Theory palette. The Theory palette has the same size pan except they house six shades instead of four. Petite Pro palettes, however, house eight shades, but the pans are much smaller. But still fairly small, and going back to Petite Four, even smaller if it's just four pans, which I think makes it just so versatile, a lot less intimidating. Yes, you only have four shades here as opposed to 12, six, or eight. If you want to use only one shade at a time or at the most two, maybe three. I think this is a perfect offering for you. And the fact, again, Viseart is so thoughtful and elegant in how they curate their shades and how they design their color stories and their palettes. The fact that it's magnetic, that you don't have to worry about, you know, using your nail to open the flap. It has a ribbon tab here that you can open successfully. Yes, it doesn't have a mirror, but perhaps you have a handheld mirror or you can rely on another compact that has a mirror. It has the plastic protective sleeve and you see here the grooves on the top and bottom indicate the fact that it is magnetic and you could use a spatula to pop these out to mix and match however you wish. This design melts the makeup pro and makeup enthusiast in that you still get the pro level quality and pro possibilities and if you want to mix and match your shades but you still have the creation for the beauty enthusiast, you take the thinking out for them as well as just have a palette that's just beautifully designed for the eyes. Introducing the Petite Four eyeshadow collection inspired by dainty pastry delicacies. These miniature treats feature mouth-watering mattes perfectly paired with sparkling sugary shades within four scrumptious eyeshadow quads. Expertly crafted and baked to perfection, these charming color stories create delightfully decadent eye-catching confections. Each magnetized miniature morsel is encased within brand new shimmering bite-sized petite packaging. Whether you're craving the rich depth of chocolate or the caramel creaminess of praline, the bare beauty, oh my favorite word, Framboise or the languorously luscious Lila. You're sure to find a heavenly treat to satisfy your desire for sweets. We have swatches. I film myself applying each quad, so I'll meet you during those demos and at the end to wrap up with my final thoughts. See you then. Fondant Ice Silver Rose with a Shimmer Finish. Lila Light Muted Mauve with a Matte Finish. Tiramisu Light Cool Tote with a Matte Finish. Argenté Silver with a Shimmer Finish. Café Creme Terracotta Nude with a Matte Finish. Peche Rose Gold Nude with a Shimmer Finish. Ron Sangring Orange Copper with Gold Reflectivity. Ganache Milk Chocolate Brown with a Matte Finish. Creme Light Beige Pink with a Matte Finish. Glassage Pink Champagne with a Shimmer Finish. Confiture 
medium pink red with a shimmer finish. Crumb Boys, soft dusty rose with a matte finish. Sucre, warm brown with a shimmer finish. Caramel warm champagne with a shimmer finish. Praline, antique gold with a shimmer finish. Pecan, sienna brown with a matte finish. Now that we've taken a look at the swatches, let's get into these demos. Viziart was also nice to send me their eye primer, which I actually already have. And with that said, I'll crack into the one that's already open. It's more of a, a silica feeling type of a texture. It's not like the Hourglass Eye Primer or the Anastasia or even the MAC Paint Pot. I like it as it's lightweight. It yields a nice how would you say it? runway for the shadows to blend on. Lila looked beautiful, especially this shade right here. Mm. Let's start with Tiramisu. Tiramisu. With my reference number 16 because I'm actually quite intrigued by the tone of the shadow, how it appears in pan and how it will blend on my eyes. I'm gonna start whipping that through. Yes, cool as expected. Leaning toward a lavender hue. But very soft as you see. And as you know, Viseart mattes are one of the best mattes in the industry, sold to both pros and makeup enthusiasts alike. The texture just makes it effortless to blend. Now with Lila, tapping that more on the outer part of the lid, just to identify any distinction. So I think basically based on what we see in pan, you would expect that shade to appear more pinky in tone, whereas Tiamisu will appear a little more grayish in tone. Taking the bristles EO2 with Lila. I'm gonna take it a little more hazy because since this is a lighter matte, I could feel like I could be a little more reckless with it. Agente, agente. Refer 21. Woo, this brush sold out fast. This is the deeper of the metallics here. It's a beautifully toned, I would say grayish silver shade that has so much depth to it and beautiful shine. I'm just carving in and under the lid. If you ever want more pow pow from a texture like this, just take it on your finger and slide it right on there. In fact, I think this is the best way to go. A brush like Refer 21 is ideal to use when you want to apply the shadow under tighter areas here. If you want a cleaner application, which we'll actually do now with the shade Fondant. The lighter silvery shade, I want this to be a little more precise in this application. With the same Refer 21 brush, we'll pop it right onto the inner corner, but I don't want it to slide out and escape, so that's why I'm using this size brush to just make it a little tighter. Well, that's pretty. All right, eye number one done. Why don't we go in with Chocolat Cafe Creme first. Same Refer 16. I would say this leans a little more warm, but it's so beautifully smooth and the tone is just gorgeous. I'm placing this all over. So I want to take, I think is ganache. Yes, ganache on the outer and inner parts of the lid. I think I want this to be more of a halo eye. Bristles Beauty again, EO2 with the ganache matte. I'll start tapping that on the outer part of the V. First piece of smoke here. Now on the inner part of the lid. Despite it appearing like it's, it looks like it's going to be, well, I would say it's pretty consistent. It does show up a little darker here on the lid in terms of perhaps more in terms of it appearing it has more of a neutral undertone than how it appears in pan. It doesn't turn muddy, however. I think it lays very nicely on top of Café Creme. Blurring the edges here with Refer 16 and Café Creme. Taking a Refer, I think this is the 12 or the 13. It's the smallest eyeshadow brush out of the bunch. With ganache on the outer part of the lower lash line, connecting it to the outer V. This shade here is more of like a, a topper moment. I wanna say orange sanguine, but it's pronounced orange sanguine. Oh, I messed that up. Taking a lot with my finger, it has beautiful shine and placing that right between ganache. So I think if you pick it up with a finger, it will have a better chance of showing up pigmented versus you try to pick this up with the brush. Or I will reapply primer in between the matte shades so it has a little more adherence, but that's beautiful. I'm just tapping in the matte so we can smooth those borders. Let me take my Refer 21 just to kind of make the middle of the eye pop. You could also wet this brush. 
I haven't wet my shadows in a very long time because I misplaced my MAC. And we spoke about this, I think, in a live where why can't you just use water? I believe the ingredients found in a setting spray are glycerin and have like that humectant property that has a little bit of tackiness that regular water doesn't, which I think will yield a better application of color, especially if you're trying to get more shine and adherence from a shadow. You kind of want that tackiness in the formula as opposed to you just using water. Now with Pesh, designated highlight shade, or it could be the main stage shade, you know, depending on how you want this look to go. Placing that on the brow bone for this eye. Cool, apply some lashes and I'll be right back. Here's a close-up of Lila and Chocolate. And on the lashes, I have Chandelier lashes in the style Lady Grace. Wide shot of both looks. And on the lips, I have Lisa Eldridge, True Velvet Matte in Velvet Fawn, topped with her gloss Embrace in Muse. To quickly speak on these looks, I love Lila. It's very cool in tone. I do love that pop of silver and just the shininess from that shade. And yes, this might not be for you if you're not into cool tone. I would imagine if you are deeper than me, it will come off more gray. So if you're not about that life, especially if you have the glam palette and you feel you could kind of achieve similar looks from that offering, then maybe you skip Lila. But if you don't have glam and you like the smaller palette and you're digging the grays, then maybe it'll be considered. Think Chocolate is your palette of choice if you tend to gravitate toward the warm shades, especially this brown. I think it's beautifully unique in that although it looks warm in the pan, it applies more neutral without a appearing muddy and as I've said before with all Viseart mattes the way they layer and they blend is so elegant in that they maintain their true color from pan to eyelid application and yes the shimmer is very soft but I like that texture I think it's very forgiving for several lid textures that do not benefit from a heavier feeling metallic or shimmer shade that those textures tend to accentuate the eyelids whereas this is more of like a, a veil of color that still has beautiful shine and offers up a nice glow to the lid. Two down, two to go. Let's take this off and I'll see you back here. Forgive me, I did not bring you in a little closer for the first round. Why don't we do that now? That's enough. Perhaps the hardest French word for me to pronounce, framboise. Raspberry. This looks to be like the pinkier tone type of a gig and again similar topper texture that we found from chocolate why don't we start off with creme again with my refer number 16. Definitely not as cool tone as the light pink found in Lila. I would say that's the shade that you could use to apply all over your lid. It has a little bit of a pinky tone but I wouldn't rely on it as like a main stage matte shade. Oh my favorite word from bois. From bois? Framboise. Tap into that medium pink that definitely leans more, not necessarily cool. I would categorize this as more neutral, definitely like a true medium pink shade. And placing that not only on the majority of the outer lid, but pulling it through the crease. That is very nice. I like that shade. Same brush with Creme. Just now whipping out the edges of Flamboise, raspberry. If you want a little more, I like to sometimes tap in Viseart mattes because they practically blend themselves. You don't feel and I don't think it necessary to swirl and twirl each and every time you apply these shadows on the lid. We could go with glaçage on the majority of the lid or we could go in with confiture, confiture. That on the lid or maybe that'll be our spotlight shade on the inner lower lid. Hmm, I think that's what I wanna do because I basically placed the lighter colors from the last two palettes on the inner corner. So maybe let's just change it up. Taking glissage with my finger and placing that on the majority of the lid. You know what I like, I'm taking my Sonia G. Soft shader. Tapping glissage, which is a little tricky to apply. This is a very light shade, is very soft, and I feel you have to let it settle. You have to let it sit on the lid for a little bit, just so that it can melt nicely into the skin. And then from there, it'll develop a really nice glow. So yes, it's lighter than its shimmer counterpart, which we'll apply here on the inner corner. But I think it brings nice light to the lid. It's not super intense. 
is very, again, like a veil of sparkle, but not messy or hard to apply. Rever 23 brush, this very small pencil brush now with confiture on the inner part of the lower lash line. I could only imagine how beautiful this would be also on the lid. Taking it pretty far across and we'll apply the matte pink on the outer part of the lower lash line. That's very pretty. You see how there's like nice sparkle there. If you were to pack this on, it'll have really nice shading. In fact, let's take the Refer 21 brush over the pink matte and also over the silvery shimmer shade. I love glissage. It's a, it's a word I could pronounce. I think because these are so lightweight, they're very easy to layer, but I understand if you're one to expect more heavy duty feel and texture from your shimmers, these might not be for you because these are very lightweight. And I think even better if you can apply with the finger. There's like a little bit of a duochrome something going on. It's not completely pink. It has like a nice flip in there. And when you combine glissage to confiture, it looks beautifully gradient. Okay, now with praline, which looks to be more of a neutral brown situation versus chocolate. So chocolate definitely is more warm. Praline is a little more cooler in tone. Dare I say, not necessarily cool, but maybe just a little more neutral. You know what? Let me start with a shimmer first. Let's start with Praline. This beautiful brown, it's like a gold brown shimmer shade. I'm just starting with my finger and placing it on the majority of the lid. Very smooth, easy to apply, and the edges just buff beautifully well. This has only one matte, so we're looking at, I think, they would categorize this more of like a satin shimmer and then these two more of like a traditional shimmer where they have more shine. How about we apply this one here, maybe to the inner corner of the eye? Let's see what that does. Oh, that's very nice. Probably could also, you know what, that's what I'll do. With my Bristles Beauty, make sure I wipe that brush. Bristles Beauty back in with the EO2 with Sucre. I wanna keep saying Sucre like Azucar, but <laughs> that's definitely not how you pronounce it the French way, Alethea. In with Pecan, Pecan, Pecan. The only matte in this quad, tapping that on the outer part of the lid. Taking down the outer part of the lid, same matte, now on the outer part of the lower lash line. It's caramelized, but it's caramelize? I don't know. Right here. And I'm wrapping it up towards the inner corner of the eye. I'm taking more of the matte shade and pulling it through the crease. Very nice. A light shimmer on the brow bone here. All right, let's step on some lashes and I'll be right back. Here we have um, the raspberry side. And here we have Praline. Same chandelier Lady Grace lashes. I know, I have two different Lisa Eldridge lipsticks on because I really wanted to wear a velvet blush with the raspberry eye and velvet affair. <laughs> with the praline eye. Also though, I want to go in with my, which I, I think is Chikohodu, but I confirm with Fude Beauty and they said I'm saying Chikohodu fine. So I don't really know. You all could tell me down below. This is from their holiday collection and it's a beautifully shaped blush brush, which I think is perfectly shaped to tap in to the matte shade in here without picking up the shimmer at all. And we're just gonna buff that on the cheeks, baby. I think that's so pretty. And again, here's a wide shot of the raspberry eye pair with Lisa Eldridge True Velvet Matte in Blush. We have the Praline side with Velvet Affair. This two-tone lipstick thing is not bad. Will I be doing it more often? Not necessarily. Am I considering it? Maybe. I actually really love the raspberry eye because although these are very soft, I think if you use these and for instance, maybe you use, let's say, Pat McGrath's Decadence Metallics first, you will say these are terrible. They don't have any pigmentation. I think you have to remember what brands you're dealing with and what their intentions are behind certain formulations. Yes, this is not as punchy as, let's say, uh, not even a uh, Pat McGrath metallic, but in a touch of the Nona one. This is meant to be a little more lightweight on the eye. And you saw once it settles on to the lid, it just has, again, a beautiful glow and sheen that I feel is friendly for a lot of lid textures. I love the tone of the matte pink. It's very soft without it looking 
like you have a pink eye, right? You're devoted to that color story. It's very monochromatic, but I still think it's very daily friendly because of the undertone. With Praline, you have more of a neutral feel. I do think you get a little more depth from that brown warm matte in Chocolat. I do feel you get a little bit of contrast by adding that matte. Maybe you'll add it on before the satin shade, which I think is beautiful. You could actually apply that color all over your lid, buff it into your crease, wrap it down under your lash line and be done. And of course, use the highlight shade for the inner corner or even place it on the lid. So I'm very happy with that quad. I think they're all distinct and I'm happy that Viseart really stuck to each color story in that you're confident in no matter how you combine these shades, it's going to be beautifully curated and just easy to achieve because all these shades just melt beautifully together. I hope those swatches and demos help. I feel these are very consistent with the Viseart offerings from their Edit Lines, Theory, and Petite Pro lines. A brand that I often recommend to those who don't really know which eyeshadows to pick because there's so many brands, different formulations. I feel Viseart shadows are ones for those who don't want a lot of frills, don't want a lot of glitter, don't want a lot of shimmer. They just want a beautifully crafted, elegant eye look that's easy to achieve because the formulas are very easy to use. As I mentioned during the demo, Viseart mattes are one of my most favorite mattes to use. They're easy to tap on, to blend, and to layer without appearing muddy. And I think that also speaks volumes of the shimmer formula as well. It might not be everyone's favorite, especially if you're accustomed to a more heavy duty shimmer and metallic that has a lot more shine and a lot more punch. I think there's something to be said and appreciated about a formula that's a little more lightweight and texture. Because remember, once it settles onto the lid, it just leaves behind a beautiful finish. And I think, again, forgiving for several lid textures. Especially if you like to layer these shadows, you can build the shadows without them appearing muddy or heavy on the skin. And if you're going anywhere, you know, I don't know where, but if you're going anywhere, you can take all four palettes and still have plenty of room for your other makeup items. It doesn't take up much space at all. And again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I just think the palette is not as intimidating. You have four shades, they all work beautifully. Again, my expectations change when I'm dealing with Viseart. I'm not expecting the most extravagantly dazzling shimmers and metallics from Viseart, although within their family, you have ones that are shinier than others. For instance, if I were to quickly compare these silver shimmers from Lila, I think have a lot more punch than the ones found in Framboise. These don't have the same finish whatsoever, but I still love the effect it leaves behind. So again, I'm not one to hold so much stock in in crazy shiny metallic shades. I think each formula has something to offer. Yes, I know there are some that are just trash and I understand that. And Viseart for me, again, I think just comes through not only with the color story, but with their beautiful formulation. Let me know if you picked up any of the Petite Four palettes. What you think of them, if you did, if you picked up all four, what are your favorites? If you just picked up one, if you're still deciding, let me know down below. A huge thank you again to Viseart for sending me these in PR. You are beyond generous. They did not ask me to film this video. This is not sponsored. As you know, I always like to share about eyeshadow palettes because they're one of my favorite makeup items ever and to provide as many demos as possible so you can better decide which one to grab or skip on. And that, my friends, is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review, tutorial, Viseart Eyeshadow Palette Extravaganza, monthly favorites or weekly vlog. Take care and I will see you again soon. <music>